Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We're so glad you found your way to us today. The Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor, which Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide everything that we do, our worship, our life together, and our service to the community near and far. This morning's service is our sanctuary worship service. Lyrics to the hymns will be on your screen, as well as scripture texts when the message has begun. You can also access our bulletin on churchofthepalms.org right on our home page. For those who enjoy worshiping in a more contemporary fashion, there is a contemporary service held on campus. Whichever way you like to worship, we hope you can share the opportunity with friends and family who might be searching for a church home. If you'd like more information about any of the announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which you can attend online. If you'd like to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission to love God and love neighbor. One of the easiest is online giving, the options of which you will find posted later in the service. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. morning. Welcome to Church of the Palms. My name is Warren Middleton and I've served as a deacon in our congregation. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we bow our heads for the prayer of invocation. Watch over us, holy God, as we take time to pray and to meditate on the continuing impact of Easter on our lives. Jesus Christ has become for us the measure of life he represents to us your gift of love and eternal life. We are a resurrection people, no longer bound by fear of death, but freed to become witnesses to the light. Nourish us to become like trees planted beside streams of water that flourish and bear much fruit because of your constant attention and abundant provision for our needs. Be known to us here in this hour. Amen. Let us praise God through our worship.
Will you please stand for the call to worship? <clears throat> Happy are those who walk in God's ways. Faithful are those whose eyes are fixed on righteousness. Come, let us love the Lord our God. Let us worship God. Each of us is allotted a ministry only we can carry out. When we pursue our own agendas and hold on to what is familiar or what we consider ours, then who shall share the story only we can live out and tell? Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Ever present God, we cling so tightly to the things of this world. Our attitudes sometimes reflect that of a five-year-old. As we clench our fists and say, mine, 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 my child, my possessions, my life, forgive us, merciful God, when we claim what is ours and when we hold on to our stubborn ways. On our journey through life, we will have many changes and many seasons. As one chapter of our lives closes, a new one will begin. Help us, gracious God, to stay connected to you and to your goodness so we might be like an open book before you. Come and inscribe your words of life into our lives. Fill our minds with your thoughts. Fill our bodies with your strength. Fill our hearts with your dreams that we might eternally love and serve you during times of transition during times of sorrow, and during times of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue our confession in silence. God hears our prayers and forgives. No longer does our life begin and end with what we consider ours. As forgiven and forgiving people, let us step into God's unique call for each of our lives. Friends, 
believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. recite together the Apostles' Creed as our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. As we, uh, as we take a moment to turn and greet one another, I want to invite forward our children this morning who will be gathering on the floor in front of the steps for the children's moment and our graduating seniors who will come up onto the chancel. Let us turn and greet one another now. Good morning, good morning. So I have some questions for you guys first. The school year is wrapping up. Are any of you guys graduating from kindergarten or from fifth grade? Any of you guys? You're graduating from kindergarten. Congratulations, that's so awesome. You're graduating from kindergarten too? Or pre-K or first grade or third grade? You're graduating from pre-K and going into kindergarten? That's so exciting. Good morning, guys. Now, would you believe it if I told you all of these big kids up here are graduating from 12th grade? Isn't that crazy? Does 12th grade feel really far away for some of you guys? Yeah, it does. Don't worry. It'll be here before your families are ready for it. I promise. <laughs> But this morning, we get to celebrate them and all of their hard work. And before we get to celebrate them, we ask them what Church of the Palms has meant to them. And some of you guys, I can see, have been part of Church of the Palms. You've grown up in this church. And if we asked you what Church of the Palms meant to you, I'm sure you'd have some really fun memories so far. But when you get to 12th grade, you're going to have even more fun memories to reflect on. And we were able to get some of those memories from our seniors and consider what Church of the Palms has meant to them. And so let's watch that now together. Hi, I'm Marissa Saba. My name is Sam Wright. Hi, I'm Reese Nippert. I'm Keely Olson. My name is Sophie Buckmeyer. My name is Morgan Wilson. My name is Madeline Olson. My name is Ginsburg Clemt. Jack Callahan. Church of the Palms has meant 
um, family. It's meant support, it's meant love, it's meant so many new things. Church of the Palms has been a place where I can come and grow my faith and talk to people about God. I have gone since I moved here, so it's become a place where I've gone into myself and met so many new friends and become a family. What I appreciate most about Church of the Palms is the diversity that it has, specifically in its pastor roles and how we have multiple pastors helping lead this church, which creates a more understanding view of who God is. Me not being Presbyterian, I think it was, it's was it been very cool to see another perspective. Overall, I would definitely say the welcome environment, it's, it's accepting of whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are. Church of the Palms has been a space, especially at this youth group, for me to learn more about God and us to have deep conversations and all just to come together. Church of the Palms has always been like a good pick-me-up. They always remind me that no matter what God loves me, He's always there for me. And so it's just it's been like a really good support system. It's a whole nother level of like you get to connect with people your age and talk more deeply about God and how it affects your life like us in high school and how we can like work that through. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you've done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all that you've done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all that you have done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you have done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you have done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you've done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you have done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you've done for me. Thank you Church of the Palms for all you've done for me. So now, uh, before we pray over these seniors, we'll have them introduce themselves. They're going to share their name, where they are graduating from, and what their plans are for fall. Hi, I'm Sophie Lutmeyer. I'm graduating from Venice High School, and I will be going to Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, and I will be majoring in motion picture production. Hi, I'm Cooper Middleton. I graduated from Cardinal Mooney. And I'm uh, going to Covenant College in Georgia to pursue business and baseball. My name is Morgan Wilson. I'm graduating from Florida Virtual School. And in the fall, I'll be going to the University of South Florida to study psychology. Hi, I'm Reese Nipper, and I'm graduating from Riverview High School. And I will be attending Florida State University, and I'll be majoring in nursing. Hi, my name is Madeline Olsom. I'm graduating from Sarasota High School. I'm going to University of South Florida and I'm majoring in business management. Hi, I'm Tanner Isaacs. I'm graduating from Pine View and <coughs> sorry. I, I'm, I know the bulletin says that I'm going to FSU. I'm actually going to uh, Trinity College of Dublin and I am majoring in astrophysics. My name is Sam Wright. I'm graduating from Suncoast Polytechnical High School, and in the fall, I will be going to USF to major in computer science. Hi, I'm Keely Olsom. Um, I'm graduating from Sarasota High. I'm going to FSU next year, and I'm majoring in business management. Good morning. I'm Marissa Saba. I am graduating from Sarasota High School, and in the fall, I'm going to Florida State University, planning on majoring in biology. Awesome, awesome. Wonderful, so let's give it up for these grads. Now, I need, I need your help for this next part, okay? I need your help for this next part. So seniors, I'm gonna have you guys step all the way down here onto the floor. And children, sometimes when somebody goes on a big trip or a big journey, or they're entering into a different stage of life, sometimes we lay hands on them and pray for them as a way to offer encouragement and support. And so children, we're going to have you guys step behind them onto the steps or even all the way up here on the chancel. Come on up. Come on up here all the way on, on top. And I want you to find a senior and put your hand on one of their shoulders. Go ahead and find a senior and put your hand on one of their shoulders if you can reach up here on the steps. Here, Charlie, let's sneak you in here. There you go. Some of you guys may want to step down one so everybody can fit. And if you can't lay your hands on a senior then maybe find somebody else who can, whose shoulder you can have, whose hand, who, what just happened? <laughs> whose shoulder you can put your hand on as Pastor Steve <laughs> prays for us. All right. Let's pray. 
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for these just wonderful young people, these seniors who are commencing into a new chapter of life, and we are grateful, God, to hear of their plans. We thank you that you have uh, been walking with them ever since their baptism, and we are grateful that you will continue to walk with them throughout the rest of their lives. May they sense that they are never alone, that not only you are there for them, but that we are there for them, and that they would always know that they have a church family to which to return. We ask, O oh God, that they would be reminded that your Holy Spirit inhabits them, and that that spirit will give them the power to live lives that would give glory to you and would be uh, a reflection of your love in the world. So bless them and keep them, O oh Lord. Make them very much aware of your great grace in their life. And may they be, O oh Lord, light in the world and salt upon the earth, that through what they say and what they do, that others will come to know of the goodness of God. For we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. kids. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Palms. It's a big day. It's not only the day when we've had the chance to recognize our seniors, but it's also Mother's Day. So we are grateful for all those significant women in our life that nurtured us, that brought us into the world, that adopted us, that mentored us, that cared for us, all those people, those women in our life that uh, blessed us on our way. And so let's give them all a big round of applause. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. We are especially grateful if you happen to be visiting with us today and hope that you will find this to be a welcome place. There's information in the back of the sanctuary if you'd like to take that along with you about our church. After worship today, uh, actually we'll be excusing our seniors during the last hymn, they'll be making their way over to the Palm Center and we invite you to go that way over there for fellowship, but even more importantly to uh, congratulate these seniors and to see some information about their lives and about where they're going and what their interests are. That's going to be all over in the Palm Center, so come and join us for that. Uh, we uh, encourage you, if you'd like to learn about membership here at Church of the Palms, to contact Mickey Brown, Dr. Brown, and she would be glad to give you information about that and let you know of the next class that's coming up. Uh, we are grateful that our Presbyterian women will be meeting next Saturday for their luncheon. That will be next Saturday at 1130. So come and uh, join us for that over in the Campus Center. Our Senior Wellbeing Ministry continues to thrive and our Caregiver's Pathway provides you all sorts of opportunities to learn about how to care for your loved one. That's on page 13. Uh, we have a pastoral transition that's just beginning. Uh, those of you, most of you know about that. And uh, you can find information about that on page 11 of your bulletin. And also there is a, uh, web, a page on the website. You can go to the link at the, on the home page of the website and you can get updated information about that pastoral transition. Next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. It's a day we really, really like to celebrate here at Church of the Palms. Uh, we have lots and lots and lots of people who have agreed to uh, share with us their gifts, their very many talents, and they, that will also be in the Palm Center. So come and join us for that. We'll be have a wonderful uh, extended fellowship time and a time for you to see the great gifts of so many of our people. Next Sunday, where? What? Red. Okay, wear red. Uh, and, you know, good for you because usually people 
get that date mixed up and they wear red like the Sunday before. But I don't see very much red here today. So good job, good job. So next Sunday, we encourage you to wear red and to uh, join us in the great celebration of Pentecost. Let's continue our worship.
Let us pray. We come before you this morning, eternal God, with a grateful heart, not because we aren't facing any challenges, but we know that with you, all things are possible. We thank you for your amazing grace that saved us, that changed and brought us into your eternal kingdom. We know that your grace is always sufficient, and we rejoice in that. By your grace, we can do things we never thought possible. We are thankful for who you are, and we thank you for what you mean to us. We are grateful that you walk with us every day and that we are never alone. On this Mother's Day, we thank you for mothers and mother figures and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, and persistence in their promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. May they be given the honor and thanks that they deserve. We thank you for the mothers who were once with us, but are now with you. We are grateful that they helped guide us, told us that we mattered, showed us love, forgave us when we failed, and cheered us on. We also acknowledge the graduating seniors today. As a congregation, we have the great fortune this morning of witnessing the fruits of their labor. We ask that you bless them as they begin to find their place in the world. Whatever their next step, let them be firmly planted on fertile soil. Help them to recognize the superheroes that reside in each one of them. May they always know that no matter where they go and how far they go from us, we are always their family and that this place is always home. We ask that you continue to bless our church and its mission. Help us to continue to care for those in need through the many ministries at this church. Help us to seek out opportunities to show your love today by asking the question, if not me, then who? Heavenly Father, give comfort to those who are grieving. Bless those in war-torn areas. We pray for your blessings on those who are sick, your provision for those who are hungry, your steadfastness for those rebuilding after a natural disaster, your forgiving nature in lessening family estrangements, your comfort for those weary in body and mind, your wisdom in helping us guide to follow the golden rule and for your mercy always. As we prepare to hear your word preached, may it encourage us in the areas we need to be encouraged. Do this all for your glory. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, who's taught his disciple to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Moment of gratitude. Giving back to God is a way of expressing concern for others, love, and gratitude. It reminds us that we have been blessed by God so that we may be a blessing to others. The scripture tells us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us do so with a loving spirit. You may give online, by text, or in the basket as you leave today. Let us give generously.
heaven, Father. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You give to us continuously. You have said that whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. In response to your generous giving, please accept the tithes and offerings that we joyously present to you today. May they bring pleasure in your presence. May our sincere desire to be faithful stewards, may it bring joy to your heart. Enable us to apply biblical principles of stewardship so that we can continue to bless others and support your ministries. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Our passage today, which we get from the Revised Common Lectionary, takes us all the way back to the night before Jesus was crucified, as told in the Gospel of John. Jesus' final discourse starts way back in chapter 13 with the washing of the disciples' feet, which you remember we celebrated way back on Maundy Thursday. So Jesus follows this with enough material to make four chapters of teaching to his disciples. His themes during that teaching, which I just love, include assurance of Jesus' abiding presence with us, the necessity of Jesus returning back to God, the promise of the Holy Spirit, which we will celebrate next week, the future of the community, and the centrality of love. And now, Jesus stops speaking to all of the disciples and turns his attention to God. 
in chapter 17, again, the night before Jesus was crucified, John records Jesus' prayer to God. Although Jesus is primarily preparing, praying for the disciples, I included verses 20 and 21 so we could hear how Jesus is also praying for us. Whew, hear now the word of God. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the word that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours." All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. And here's the part for us. I ask not only on behalf of those, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O oh God, to the word just read and the words to come, that they might point to the word made flesh, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, amen. On this Mother's Day and graduating Senior Sunday, I wanted to share with you all one of my important lessons that is echoed in our scripture passage for today. I am convinced that all of life is an exercise in learning how to let go. And there is no greater teacher than our children. Those sweet little buggers who cannot survive even a moment without you in the beginning are in the blink of an eye, rolling their eyes back in their heads and walking away in disgust because you're breathing wrong. True story. Is that just girls? I don't know. As most of you know, my saint of a husband raised our blended family of five daughters with me. While I would never recommend having more children than adults in the same house, we did have the tiny advantage of the freedom to cut a wide swath around the daughter who was in that stage of finding it very difficult to be on the same planet as us. We, however, never had to grovel because we always had at least one daughter who thought we were decent human beings for the moment. Even with their ups and downs, our tendencies as mothers, as parents, is often to cling a little too tightly to our children. So God, in infinite wisdom, has a plan that helps us make our graduating sons and daughters just a touch unbearable so that we can actually let them go. <laughs> Many parents find themselves joyfully packing up their graduates' rooms because, you know, it is time. It is time for them to move out and get on with their own life. 
because they know everything. <laughs> but you don't have to have kids to receive the lessons in letting go. We get practice when our employer has a cutback and we have to leave a job that we needed or a job that we loved. We have to let go of parts of our physical health after accidents, diagnoses, and of course with aging. Sometimes we have to let go of our hopes and dreams because of life events. We've all had to let go of a person that we loved, sometimes far too soon. And here's a fun fact. In time, each and every one of us will have to let go of all of our possessions, our material wealth, the people we love, and the very air in our lungs because we belong to God and not this world. It's an interesting paradox. The life lessons in letting go are juxtaposed against a human need for belonging. 80 years ago, Abraham Maslow recognized this and included it in his well-known diagram. The five levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs are physiological, safety, love and belonging, esteem and self-actualization. Those lower level needs like for food, water and safety must be met before those higher needs like belonging can even be fulfilled. A sense of belonging is intricately connected to our well-being. And belonging is very different than fitting in. Lewis Howes shares this from his experience in school. Even if you're the most secure person on the planet, there probably has been a time when you just wanted to fit in. I remember being the youngest on these sports teams, he wrote, growing up and just wanting to feel like I belonged there. I wanted them to like me, feel like I mattered, and that I was cool to them. But sometimes they do things I didn't agree with, like bully kids or make fun of people but I didn't say anything. Why? Because if you stand up for something, it means you'll stand alone. And that was my biggest fear, being alone. We all just want to belong somewhere. Well, it turns out the minute you become someone else, some, who someone else wants you to be, to fit in and to make sure that people like you, is the moment that you no longer belong anywhere. Have you ever felt like a social chameleon, always changing your colors depending on what environment you're in? I know I have. Well-known researcher and author Brene Brown writes this, true belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. So as we spend our lives growing into who God created us to be, we're invited to reflect on our life, both the good and the unsavory. We can trust God to use all of our experiences and all of who we are to bring healing into the world, knowing that we are loved unconditionally and that we belong in life and in death to God can give us the courage to show up as our real, authentic selves. Jesus clearly says that we belong to God and not this world, which might explain the homesickness I feel from time to time. Have you ever felt it? Oh, I don't mean the kind of homesickness like when you go to summer camp or off to college or making a move where we leave friends and family behind. I'm talking about that deeper longing that I have felt as an adult who is literally at home in the house that she built, in the town where she raised her kids, surrounded by friends and family. I guess belonging to God and not the world sometimes creates a spiritual homesickness that can only be comforted by God. These days when I feel it, I receive it as an invitation to draw close to Christ in quiet reflection. 
I feel a real tension between this being in the world and not of the world. Jesus says that he and his disciples do not belong to the world, which is to say the world's claims do not shape their essential identity, faith, and values. But at the same time, Christ is crystal clear that there is no escape from the reality of the world. Jesus did not pray for the disciples to be transported out of the world, only that God would protect them. Not unlike how we want to protect our kids. When they are little, we hold their hands when, we, when they cross the street while we are teaching them to look both ways because eventually we have to let them go to cross the street and the county lines and the state lines and even the ocean all by themselves. The question for our graduates, and for each of us, I think, is how do we live in the world without succumbing to its values and pressures? How do we live among all the knotted complexities of the world without getting ourselves entangled? Well, I'll tell you how. I believe the answer is found in belonging to each other. I know that we ultimately belong to God, but God created us for relationship. We languish alone. We grow and flourish together. Have you ever heard the silent sermon? I bet you're all wishing for it right now. <laughs> Sorry for your luck. It goes like this. A member of a church who had been attending services regularly suddenly stopped going. After a few weeks, the pastor made a visit. It was a chilly evening. The pastor found the man at home alone, sitting by a blazing fire. Guessing the reason for his pastor's visit, the man welcomed him, led him to a comfortable chair near the fireplace, and waited. The pastor made himself at home, but said nothing. In the grave silence, he watched the dance of the flames around the burning logs. After some minutes, the pastor took the fire tongs, carefully picked up a brightly burning ember and placed it to one side of the hearth all alone. Then he sat back in his chair, still silent. The host watched all this in quiet contemplation as the one lone ember's flame flickered and diminished. There was a momentary glow and then its fire was no more. Soon it was cold and dead. Not a word had been spoken since the initial greeting. The pastor glanced at his watch and realized that it was time to leave. He slowly stood up, picked up the cold, dead ember, and placed it back in the middle of the fire. Immediately, it began to glow once more with the light and warmth of the burning coals around it. As the pastor reached the door to leave, the host said with a tear running down his cheek, thank you so much for your visit and especially for the fiery sermon. I'll be back in church next Sunday. You see, we belong to God, which means we belong to each other. We need each other for support for encouragement, for laughter, for joy, for safe places to practice listening with love even when we disagree. We need people to see the real us and to know our name because that is true belonging. There was a wonderful story last week in USA Today about a 50-year-old single foster dad named Peter Mutsabazi, originally from Uganda, now living in North Carolina with his three adopted kids. When Peter was 10 years old, he ran away from home to live on the streets in Kampala, Uganda, because it was safer there than with his parents. Peter lived by a bus stop garbage dump near a market where he would steal food to survive. Until one day, one of the men he was going to rob asked him a question that changed his life. What is your name? In all of his years living on the streets, no one had ever asked him his name. In his book, Now I Am Known, Peter wrote, 
Anonymity helped me forget myself and remained calloused, detached. On the other hand, something about the way this short man asked my name stirred up an unfamiliar hope inside of me. The man who asked Peter his name would keep coming back to the market to find them, little by little offering more connection, like an invitation to a family dinner and the opportunity to go to school that eventually brought Peter to the States. Peter shared how his story and his wounds help him connect to the foster kids that he supports. Seen as a thief and a dirty little boy who didn't matter in life, Peter has a deep connection with the kids who come into his home who are also feeling unwanted and unloved. Henry Nouwen would call this being a wounded healer. I wonder if grace could abound in our homes the way it does in Peter Mutabazi's. When an adoptive or foster child is struggling and has shut him out, Peter makes sure that the family dog is there with them for comfort, but also to remind them that they are wanted, that they belong. Around the dog's neck is a bandana with these words, and I would like you to hear these words as if God is speaking to you. You matter. You belong. You are loved. You are seen. You are chosen. You are a gift. You are not alone. You are enough. You are heard. You are brave. You are special. You are known. Can we get those words tattooed on our hearts? So our graduates and each one of us are sent out like the disciples with this deep knowing that we belong to God and not the world. As Christians, many of us were baptized as infants, and many of us had our children baptized as infants, much like Pastor Genevieve will baptize her first grandchild, Henry, today in the 11 o'clock service. Our parents, our grandparents, and we ourselves admitted that the world can be a scary place, and on our own, we cannot guarantee our child's future. So in baptism, we let God claim our children. We hand their soul over to God through Jesus, in whose hands alone they would be safe forever, in life and in death. It is a beautiful world, and it is a rough world. So I urge you, graduating seniors, and those of us who are in a different season in life, not to conform to the roughness of this world, not to go with the flow of anger and hate, but to be transformed from the inside out. Return every day to the love of God in Jesus, who scooped you up at that baptismal font. Rest secure in that love, and let it help you be loving too. Let that love motivate you to do the hard work of figuring out what God wants for you and from you. Let love, not hate, good, not evil, guide you each and every day. Remember, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Live in that hope. Rest in that hope and go forward with courage to connect and to belong with one another, knowing that our world belongs to God, and so do we.
Friends, as we leave this place to go visit with those amazing seniors and see their tables, we leave with a deep knowing how we belong to God, and because of that, we belong to each other. So receive this blessing with every person that you encounter. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow through your hearts so that all might see and believe. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.